This YouTube channel generates over $80,000 monthly and they're racking up millions of views with every upload they do. And you've probably seen those videos yourself. Those crazy 3D animations keep people glued to their screens. And ever since I saw their first video, I was completely hooked. And it made me curious, can this be done using AI? So I did some digging. Fern was made by the founder behind the popular German YouTube channel Simplissimus and the Dutch YouTube channel Hoog. On all of these three channels combined, almost 50 people are working daily to produce these type of videos. And 15 of them are responsible for the 2D and the 3D animations. Which is crazy, but it's probably also the reason behind their success. You see, I don't have that budget available to me. Neither do I have the skills to animate, do academic research, or I have that smooth voiceover. But I do know how to use AI. And with just two hours of my time, I managed to make this trailer. It's June 5th, 1942, in Pascagoula, Mississippi. Two young girls sleep peacefully in their convent bedroom. Outside, a window screen has been carefully slid open. Someone is watching. Someone is waiting. By morning, 11-year-old Mary Evelyn Briggs and 12-year-old Edna Marie Hidel will wake up to discover locks of their hair scattered across their pillows. The intruder took nothing else, no money, no valuables, just hair. This is the beginning of one of America's strangest unsolved mysteries. This is the true story of the Phantom Barber of Pascagoula. Everything you just saw was done using AI. And in this video, I will review exactly the AI tools that I was using for the ideation, the scripting, for the animation, and also for the voiceover. Now, I even managed to make a thumbnail in the style of Fern, which was actually super easy. So I will teach you how to do that also in this video. If you want to follow along, I will leave the link to all the tools that I used in the description down below. Step number one, ideation and scripting. This is by far the most important step because this is where every video starts. You see, Fern has over 10 people working on this part because their ideas and their script is what makes the video the best. I don't have that team available to me. So for this, we will be using a tool that is called Poppy AI. And I actually made this template right here that will help you make your own script. The first thing you need to do is you need to answer these questions. And this will help you come up with video ideas it will give you a bit more context of what your videos are about and what your channel is about. So you want to click on press record and then you want to start answering these questions. My niche is high quality documentary storytelling using 3D and visual effects. Now I have all the answers to my questions in this voice recording and I don't have to type it out, which will save me a lot of time. We now move over to step number two, which is pasting in some videos of Fern. The way you do this is as follows. You go to YouTube, then you search for Fern or any of the channels that you want to like mimic. And then all you have to do is you have to like share this, copy it, and then you paste it inside of this box. Now in my case, let's make this a little bit bigger. And now it is in there and it's automatically transcribed. So you can add in as many videos as you'd like. I'd suggest keeping this to like two to eight eight maximum because the more you use the more credits you will be spending on this next up you can use a framework you can write your own custom framework right here in a google document and you can upload it right here or you can use the same framework as i do which is using these youtube videos from this popular youtuber callaway shout out to callaway to make my framework so now it's using these frameworks to make the script and this is a great video about how to create a good hook and this is a great video on storytelling. So I'm using these two videos as a reference for the AI to write their scripts. And now once you've added in your framework, you're ready for the next step, which is tying it all together in this chatbot. So you see this chatbot has all of these sources of our voice memo, or YouTube videos and or frameworks all connected in one chat. This is not possible right now in ChatGPT or you can do that technically, but it will take you a lot of time getting the transcript of each and every video. And this is just super easy and has a clear overview to use. So what you wanna do here is you wanna make this in full screen. Then you wanna choose the cloud four and now you want to enter in your prompt you can use this exact prompt right here generate a list of 15 unique real incidents with clear protagonists case that feels strange mysterious or cinematic basically you're asking it to find some unique ideas that will help you make good stories so for each case you want to include a short summary why it's compelling a suggested structure 
and the priorities. All you want to do is you will copy this prompt. I will give you the prompt in the description down below and then you paste it inside of Poppy. Now, once you hit enter, it will start thinking and it basically works as ChatGPT. So you're just going to get a few different ideas here. It gave me around 15 unique ideas that we can make a video about. So for this one, I'm going to go with this one. So this is about a story where someone broke into the home of some girls in Mississippi and they're just cut their hair for some reason and nothing ever happened. Quite strange. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask it this prompt. So you're going to say, I'm going for this one. And then you're going to say you're a documentary script writer specializing in Fern style YouTube videos. So it understands who that person is, who Fern is. You want to give it a bit of context in terms of like what is important. You want to tell what the rules are for script writing, write short punchy sentences, use vivid atmospheric details. And then you also want to give it a bit of a structure. So you're going to say a cold open, set up an atmosphere, then inciting instant escalation, key discovery, all of that. Then you can optionally give it a target length. So in my case, I want to make an eight minute YouTube video because that way I can add ads on my videos. If you have it shorter, then you have less ads, which makes you less money. Copy this prompt and now put it back into Poppy AI. So it gave me this answer right here. It has carefully made different scenes. And we have this scene in particular, which I used for my video. So we have scene one. June 5th, 1942, Pascagoula, Mississippi. Two young girls sleep peacefully in their convent bedroom. The summer heats make the air thick and still. Outside, a window screen has been carefully slid open. Someone is watching someone is waiting. By morning, 11-year-old Mary Evelyn Briggs and 12-year-old Edna Marie Heidel will wake up to discover locks of their hair scattered across the pillows. You see, I'm not a good voiceover artist, but we will be making a voiceover in one of the next steps. So if you like this, then you can just copy this, put this inside your document, and this will be the script that we will be using for this trailer. So now you got your script, and before we start making our voiceover, we're gonna do the animations first. And for the animations, we're using an image and a video model, which is called OpenArt. I will leave the link to that in the description down below. Basically, after you've signed up to OpenArt, you will be brought to this page. Then you want to go over to images and here you want to select the model, which is Flux Dev. This is by far the best model for this job. To create our images in the style of Fern, I actually made this ChatGPT prompt bot. And this bot will help you make the best kind of prompts for your videos. So what I did is I have my script right here. This script is set up in different scenes. So I have this first part and I want to have an image of this. I basically want to have like two young girls sleeping in a bedroom and then someone is sitting there outside a window waiting for them. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it into the chatbot and now it will come up with a prompt that we can use inside of Flux Dev. So the only thing I want you to do is go through this prompt. Don't blindly trust it. You might want to adjust it a little bit, add in some specific details, and then you will have the best version of your prompt. So I changed up the prompt slightly by just adding in a few details about what the girls are wearing, uh, how they look like, and basically this is the prompt we will be using. Now we're gonna go over to Flux Dev. You're gonna enter in your prompt and then you wanna switch the auto enhance to off because otherwise it will add in any like unnecessary details. Then for this output size, you wanna do this in 16 by nine and then you're gonna click on generate. Now that gave me this result right here. And this is perfect for what I have in mind for this scene. The only thing you want to do now is you wanna upscale this. To upscale it, you can choose your upscale mode and you wanna do this. 2x or 4x. I already did in 2x, so now I have this 2x version, which is a higher resolution, which is better for animating your image. Next up, you want to use the image to video animator. So you go to image and then you click on image to video. And now this will bring you over to image to video generation on OpenArt. So here you want to select your model. For these videos, I'm mostly using Kling 2.1 and I'm using C Dance. In my opinion, for these kind of animations, this worked the best. I got the best results using these models. So you want to select Kling 2.1 and now we need to enter in our prompt. If you don't know what to prompt it, if you don't know anything specific, you can ask the ChatGPT to make a Kling 2.1 prompt for this video. Now you take your prompt, put it in here, then also include a negative prompt. I have this one right here. And basically what a negative prompt does is it tells you like everything you don't want to see in that video happening. Then you select the duration. In this case, I'm 
I'm gonna go with 10 seconds. And then for the quality mode, we're gonna choose Pro. Pro is, in my opinion, the best. It's a lot cheaper than Master, so just use Pro and you will save some credits. Then you click on Create, and now your video will be created. So then it gave me this result. And the slow zoom in is exactly what I'm going for. And even like this, like vague figure that that is watching these girls it, it's really creepy like this is the exact type of vibe we're going for so now you got your first scene ready you just gotta rinse and repeat this for the next scenes for the next one i just copied in this text and then i put this inside of ChatGPT, and i just asked like this is the next scene and now it's making us a new image prompt for that next scene we can tweak it a little bit and then we can use that inside of open art and i actually made this version of that this is the type of vibe we're going for here so now you upscale that and then you put it inside the image to video generator and then you get a video like this i did the same thing for the last scene and it gave me this image and then it gave me this video now we have all of the visuals ready the only thing we need now is the voiceover so step number three is creating your voiceover through 11 apps a voiceover like fern is made by a human it's actually one of the founders that is doing the voiceovers i believe if you want to record a voiceover yourself please do so but like you heard from my video i'm not a good voiceover artist so what you want to do is you can either hire someone but this is quite expensive like on fiverr i believe it's like almost 100 to 200 bucks for like a 10 minute video you can also use ai and this is what we will be using we'll be using 11 labs for this you can actually use their free plan or you can get their paid plan which is pretty cheap and you can make good sounding voices inside of 11 labs you want to click on add in a voice then you want to click on voice design now you want to use a prompt to get a similar sounding voice to fern voiceover he has a very conversational voice like he's talking to you and he's in the room with you so I'm going to go with that type of style. So I'm going to go with a younger American male in his late 20s to early 30s with a warm mid to upper baritone voice. Conversational, investigative and steady. Relaxed and moderate pacing with deliberate pauses. So that is the prompt that I'm going to put in here. Now we can choose what kind of text needs to be previewed. I'm going to go with a segment from my script. So I know exactly if I like the sounding of this voiceover. So we click on generate voice and this will give you three different versions have a listen to each of them june 5th 1942 in pascagoula mississippi that one is a bit too fast it's june 5th 1942 in pascagoula mississippi this one's quite good it's june 5th 1942 in pascagoula mississippi this one might be my favorite after you got your voice you want to enter in your script so you want to copy your entire script and then you want to put this inside of 11 labs text to speech here select the voice you just made for me it's this one it's a little bit different than the preview ones because i made this one in advance now you want to keep this at the default styles or if you need you can tweak it a little bit and then you click on generate speech it's june 5th 1942 in pascagoula mississippi two young girls sleep peacefully in their convent bedroom this sounds super good to me like this is exactly the style of voice we're going for next up you download this and now you have everything completed all you have to do is tie it all together in the editing which is step number four finishing up the video in the editing process for this unfortunately we're not using ai but you want to use your favorite video editing software this could be CapCut, this could be premiere pro CapCut might be the easiest one for beginners if you know how to edit you can use premiere pro so in this case i'm using premiere pro what you then do is you import all of the animations that you've made then you import the voiceover that you've made then you want to lay out carefully where to put each animation the next step is adding in some simple transitions and some fade ins and fade outs this will elevate the experience of your video after doing that there's only one thing left to do which is adding in some sound effects you can get those sound effects from 11 labs too if you go over to 11 labs you can go over to sound effects and here you can create your own custom sound effects so that's exactly what i did for each part of that video and now it gave me this result now your video is complete all you have to do is export it and then the only thing left to do is add in the thumbnail so you can upload this to youtube now making a thumbnail will cost you a lot of money if you do this with a graphic designer i believe the one fern using is easily over 100 dollars per thumbnail so for this we'll be using a tool called pixels ai again i will leave the link to pixels and all the other tools that i mentioned in the description down below so you can try it out yourself now fern has a very particular style 
style to his thumbnails. And all of his thumbnails are very high quality. Sometimes he's using a mannequin like this one, and other times he's using images of the protagonist in his videos. You see, all of these videos are doing millions of views, so something must be working for him. For this video, we're going with this mannequin style thumbnail. To make these thumbnails, we're gonna use pixels, and for this, we need to enter in our prompt. So I have this prompt, which is a cinematic 3D render of two smooth white mannequins with no facial features, styled as young girls with red hair, one with braids, the other one with uneven curls. Now behind them, a taller faceless mannequin man is dressed in a white rolled sleeve and he has scissors in his hands. So basically what he's gonna do is he's gonna cut their hair. That's kind of like the goal. So now we give it some more details of what kind of like palettes of colors we want to use and what we want it to look like. I have it captured on a 15 millimeter lens. This is not necessary, but it can add in a bit more details of what you want the thumbnail to look like. If you want this prompt, I will leave it in the description down below. Then you're going to click on generate and this will cost you like less than 25 cents per generation. It gave me this result. It might take you a few tries to get exactly what you want, but this thumbnail already looks super cool. The only thing I want to add in here is the text. Now to add in text, you don't need to use something like Photoshop. You can do so inside of Pixels. What you wanna do is you wanna click on edit and now you can select a box. So I'm gonna select a box like this and I'm gonna add in what I want to add in there. So I'm gonna add in the word phantom in large bold white letters. Basically what I want to have is I want to have this written like behind him. So this guy, like this mannequin is in front of the letters. So now we're gonna click on generate and then this will take like less than a minute and actually gave me this result. Now you can download this and then you can start uploading your videos. So now you understand how to make fern styled documentary videos using AI. This has been quite a big project and I love the outcome of our video. I do want to say if you were to do this without AI, it will cost you like 10 times as much. But if you only make one video, then this still is an expensive method. So if you truly want to make documentary style videos, then I would suggest getting all of these subscriptions. I actually use Poppy daily for my own videos. I use OpenArt for all my image and video generations. I use 11 Labs anytime I need a voiceover or sound effects. And for my thumbnails, I still use Pixel daily. So for someone like me, it makes sense to have all of these subscription. If you're just starting out, you might only be able to afford one or two of them. Then I would suggest getting a tool like OpenArt because that will save you the most amount of time when it comes to generating and animating those images. You can check out all the tools that I mentioned and the prompts that I used in the description down below. Now click the video on the screen right now if you want to learn how you can make animations using AI.